I'm going to talk about a lot of things in today's video. We're going to focus on what my outlook is for the rest of the year. And yes, I am in a different location. I'm here in New York City until Thursday, and then I will be going on vacation. So might not be recording as many videos then, but I want to focus on what the future outlook is for from my perspective and what I see. Markets are currently pricing in the absolute Goldilocks uh, soft landing and future recovery occurring very soon. However, I definitely do not see that outcome materializing in the way that the market is pricing it. And we're very early in earnings season. <clears throat> Some interpret that the earnings so far are going well and that earnings season will continue to hold up because consumer spending has been rather strong. And while I think and agree with the notion that the consumer has been strong, the economy has been strong, I don't necessarily agree that we're troughing here, that this is the bottom in economic activity and the recovery in earnings is going to <clears throat> pick up from here and continue from here. That's not what I expect. And my interpretation of earnings season thus far is that that actually isn't the case. So far, the numbers we've gotten, the banks, some of the banks, the biggest banks, are quite strong. However, I expect there will be banks that come out that are going to be rather weak, and even some big banks that are going to be rather weak, like Goldman Sachs. Regional banks are a big unknown. The banks are benefiting, particularly the banks that have reported so far, like JP Morgan, they're benefiting from higher interest rates, which are increasing their net interest income. And in some cases, JP Morgan's case, their deposit base is growing, but only JP Morgan's deposit base is growing. All the other banks that have reported thus far, their deposit base is actually shrinking. Why is their deposit base shrinking? Their deposit base is shrinking because the consumer is spending their money. There is a net outflow of money. So what was once robust consumer spend or consumer savings rather is now becoming more normalized consumer savings. Consumers are draining their deposit balances. That's why you saw Wells Fargo, for example, <clears throat> which was able to generate a lot of money because lower or higher interest rates are allowing a bank that makes loans and benefits from interest rates rising to have a smaller capital base to make future loans on. And, you know, that is definitely going to be offset to some extent by higher interest rates. But that's not the point I'm trying to make. If you look at other more consumer facing businesses that have reported in the last few weeks, either last quarter's earnings or the quarter before that that reported in the last week and gave very accurate, I assume, guidance in the last week of Q2, Nike, Micron, uh, Walgreens, General Mills, all those stocks I just mentioned were down after earnings. Why were they down after earnings? because they see further consumer deterioration. Conagra reported last week, food company, food. They're saying people are beginning to trade down in the quality of food they're purchasing. Costco at their last earnings said they're seeing people trade down from meat to poultry, to red meat, from red meat to poultry. They also said this is behavior that is consistent with periods like the 0708 recession and past recessions. The recession call is difficult to make at this point, but I think the potential for it to occur in the future is still quite high. And there are many banks, while Goldman did revise down its expectations for it occurring this year, there are several banks that still forecast it occurring later this year. The Fed staff expected to occur later this year. There are many signs that indicate it's going to occur later this year. Conagra, people trading down in food. Costco, people trading down in food. Walgreens saying the consumer is deteriorating. That is a very consumer-facing business. Same thing with General Mills. Nike, weaker than expected forward guidance. We've had a rather robust start to the year, at least in Q1 was rather robust. Q2, yes, consumer spending 
maybe hasn't ticked down in a major way, but consumer savings has. What does that indicate? That indicates that future consumer spending is tilted towards being less strong. They have less ammunition to spend. They're spending more on credit cards. At the same time, bank capital requirements are about to go up. It's about to become more difficult for banks that don't have, you know, retained capital to make future loans. More reason for consumer spending to come down. Student loans are about to be resumed. That's going to significantly impact the middle class. That's that's a lot of spending that could otherwise occur that is now going to have to go towards paying student loans, further depleting savings, further depleting um, spending power in the economy. Delta Airlines beat expectations, raised forecasts. Yes, they did kind of give some sort of pre-announcement, but the stock has pulled back since that earnings report. They're down from the earnings. The stock was up 4% in the pre-market that day, came down as that day progressed, and they've they've continued to go down. They, there was downside follow-through on that Delta earnings report. What does that tell me? That tells me at a time <clears throat> when many stocks are trading at all-time highs that a lot is currently priced in. As I said at the beginning of the video, we're currently priced for absolute Goldilocks. In my opinion... The future is not Goldilocks. The future is not we're done. The Fed is done. All the consumer tightening has been seen. All the Fed tightening has been seen. My outlook on it is that consumer savings are being depleted. Forward guidance is coming down. There's significant signs that future spending is not going to be what we've seen in the past two quarters. And there's significant potential for additional deterioration. So with stocks at near all-time highs, all the major indices approaching all-time highs, it becomes very challenging to see that there's going to be continued upward economic boom. We were on a, an unsustainable growth path. We had stimulus. We had aggressive savings. We had a Goldilocks former environment. Now many stocks are at or above those levels. The indices as a whole are approaching those levels, new all-time highs. And the environment is simply very different. We have higher risk-free rates of return. That impacts the risk profile and the risk the adjusted return. Growth is definitely slowing despite positive GDP in Q1, despite what is going to be less positive GDP in Q2, but still positive GDP. Earnings are declining. That is a impo very, <clears throat> very important notion, that earnings are declining despite positive GDP. We're expecting GDP to continue on this path. The Fed is expecting continued below-trend growth. This is not a Goldilocks environment. And to price stocks in a Goldilocks way, I think, is a fool's errand. I think maybe the October lows, a bounce, was justified then. But since then, a lot of things have changed. Interest rates have gone higher. The Fed funds rate has gone higher. And it's going to continue to go higher. And even as the Fed stops, it's not like they're anticipating cutting in a very rapid fashion. What they're anticipating is inflation coming down and holding the rate steady, meaning additional tightening coming. There was just a building in Baltimore that sold for more than half off its previous sales price in 2018. There's high uncertainties around the commercial real estate sector. We're in full return to normal mode. We're in full boom mode in terms of stocks. We're seeing 1% NASDAQ days on absolutely no news. We've completely reversed the pullback from uh, inflation expectations, beating expectations, and ticking up. Energy prices are once again beginning to tick up. We're seeing people at the IEA saying the, the supply demand picture is going to continue to get tighter. That is going to have uh, significant effects both on inflation and consumer spending. That was a big part of why we had some recessionary signs last year. 
and possibly why we've seen some abatement of those recessionary signs. But if you look at Arbob gas, which is not oil, it's the actual gas, the refined product, it the chart looks very strong. Yes, it hasn't been as strong as oil in the last month, but you look at it over the five year, you look at it over the last year, that is a chart that is remaining very strong. There's definitely demand for gasoline. So I see way more signs that the future is not as bright as the past than I see signs that the soft landing has been achieved and we're ready for earnings growth. I expect the, the rest of earnings season, while the bar has been certainly low and some companies may beat expectations, to be, oh, that company beat expectations, but its forward guidance isn't some sort of rosy outlook. That's, you know, despite Delta posting that, their stock still came down. Nike said that, their stock came down. Walgreens said that, their stock came down. Levi's, another consumer-facing business, future outlook is not so good. Conagra, we're seeing signs of consumers trading down. Costco, we're seeing signs of consumer trading down. I don't see any company besides Delta who 75% of airline travel is done by uh, individuals who make over $100,000 a year and Delta is even more more higher than that, uh, saying the consumer is expected to grow from here. I think that ultimately what, what is the case is we had an incredible consumer boom driven by aggressive stimulus. We then got inflation. The Fed hiked interest rates. That is exactly what late cycle economic periods are. We get inflation, the Fed hikes interest rates. Now I think we enter and get closer to the pullback from that. Whether or not it's a recession, I don't know. I think that's just semantics because we're seeing positive GDP and we're seeing earnings decline. So let's see what happens. Um, you know, you can't really look too much into one single day's video, but that's or one single day's trading. That's today's video. And until next time, peace out.